stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Now surely you guys don't still believe in haunted radios. Well, there's nothing haunted about this 891. What's happening is I'm using an HT to send an APRS message. There's a Raspberry Pi back on the bench behind me that's listening for those commands. Once it hears a command, it's just simply running a set of actions. In this particular case, I'm using a relay connected up to the Raspberry Pi's GPIO pins to turn the radio on and off. Let's jump over to the bench. I'll give you guys a quick demo, and then I'll walk you through exactly how I made this happen. All right, so for the demo, I'll just go ahead and start composing a new APRS message. I've already got one keyed up here ready to go, and the message just says radio on. Let's go ahead and hit reply on that, and then message transmit. Give it just a couple of seconds. You'll be able to watch that radio power right up. Now, hang on for one second here, and I should get a reply on the radio telling me that the radio on command was received. Now, let's go ahead and send it the radio off command. Should take it just a couple of seconds. The radio will shut off, and then it will send us a reply again telling us that that radio off message was received. And there it comes there. Radio off, command received. So now, let me show you guys how this was done. So if you were watching the Raspberry Pi as I was sending these commands, this is what you would have seen. My script is running back here in the background, and then we've got a couple of messages here on the screen. This one says, radio off, command was received. We can just click OK. And the other one says, radio on, command was received. So we got this one first, and then it got the radio off command. So let me kill this script, and I need to show you guys a couple of things if you're interested in making this happen on your system. So starting out in the home directory, and if you're not sure if you're in your home directory or not, you can just hit CD and press return. Next, we need to move into a directory where we can create the systemd file needed for this. So I'm going to go CD space dot config forward slash systemd forward slash user. Now, you may not have this particular directory on your system. If not, just go ahead and create it. You may need to create both. The, you will definitely have the .config file or directory, but you may not have the systemd or the user directory. So if you need to, you'll go ahead and create those. Now, I have already created this direwolf dot service file right here. We're going to take a look at what's in that. And don't worry if you're not able to read everything on the screen. There is a sample file in the main script that contains this. You can just scroll all the way down to the bottom where you will be able to copy and paste this into your own file. The only thing you may need to do is you may need to modify the paths so that they point to the correct spots on your drive. For instance, right here, I'm using Pi because that's the username on this particular Raspberry Pi. If yours is something different, this is one of those spaces you would have to change. But basically what we're doing is we're using screen to start Direwolf. We're telling it to use this specific config file, and this is just a standard config file for Direwolf, and we are logging everything Direwolf hears into this direwolf.log file. Now, one thing to note when you are creating this direwolf.service file, you can just use nano to do that. But I do want to go ahead and list out this directory and show you that my user is the actual owner of this file. This is not a root file, so don't use sudo when you're creating the direwolf.service file. And I want to give a big shout out to n0bml. He sent me a message after a recent video showing me that you could in fact run systemd as the user and not have it running as root. I'm going to leave a link to that article he sent me down in the description in case you're not familiar with it either. Let's go ahead and clear the screen. 
and I'm going to go ahead and move back to the home directory. Now, we need to load that new service file that we just created into the system. And we'll do that with systemctl dash dash user space daemon hyphen re reload. Let's go ahead and press return. That will refresh the system. Now we can enable it so it will start on boot. And we do that with systemctl dash dash user enable direwolf dot service. We'll go ahead and press return. And now every time the Raspberry Pi boots, that direwolf.service file will start. And then if you need to start that file right away, you can go ahead and run systemctl dash dash user space start direwolf.service. Since mine is already running, I'm not going to run that particular command there. Okay, so let's quickly take a look at this bash script that I have written. And guys, this is just kind of a proof of concept. I would love to see a few of you take this and see how far we can kind of push the limits using something along these lines. We've just got some notes right up here at the top, and then we're going to start defining some variables. Right here, you'll see that we're defining the location of the log file. Now, the location of the log file is what we set up right here in the direwolf.service file. That was the dash L or dash capital L out at the end that told direwolf where to store the log. So make sure that this line right here matches what you have in that uh, direwolf.service file. The next line here is defining my call sign and, importantly, my SSID. It will only work if the command comes from the uh, operator that is defined right here. So if you set it up to work with dash 7 and then you try to send this command uh, from a radio that's running as dash 9, it's not going to work. It's going to ignore that. And then the next section here is we're going to, here's some notes on this. We're going to define up to four different commands. So you can see that I've got radio on, radio off, then I've got reboot, and then I just put NA down here for number four because I wasn't using this. I only tested the three particular commands. Uh, next up, we've just got a time to delay between the scans. And then I went ahead and defined the systemd name or the systemd service name right here. So if you called your something other than direwolf.service, you could modify this line right here for whatever you decided to name that service file. We don't have to worry about changing this line here. It's just a temp file, so you can skip that. Now, this next section here is specific to my particular setup here. What I was doing is you need to set the GPIO pins. Uh, so this first line here sets it as export. And then this second line here sets it uh, the direction as out, meaning it's a output GPIO pin and not an input. So we're not uh, really reading. We're just writing to it to turn the radio on and off. This next section here is... If uh, you want the script to do something particular every time it exits, you can put it in this section right here. In my case, I wanted it to unexport GPIO pin 23, basically resetting it to its default state uh, every time I quit the script. Now, right below that is where we're going to put the commands that we want to run every time one of the keywords is captured. So in this particular case, command one, I believe that was radio on. You can see I've got a comment right here on that. I'm telling it to export the display and I'm using X message to print a message on the screen. And it's basically telling me that command one was received. This is just a variable right here. After it prints that on the screen, then it is simply echoing one to this particular file here. In this case, uh, when we echo one, it's going to turn the radio on. When we echo zero, it's going to turn the radio off. So in the next one right here, this command two function, you're going to see basically the same thing with the exception of this line right here. 
Instead of echoing one to turn the radio off, we echo zero to turn, I'm sorry, instead of echoing one to turn the radio on, we echo zero to that file to turn the radio off. Command three right here is a super, super simple example. Again, we're exporting that message to the center of the screen, telling, uh, telling us that command three was received. It's going to hesitate or sleep for three seconds, and then it's simply going to reboot the Raspberry Pi. And here is where you could also define that fourth command. Now, you shouldn't have to edit anything below this right here. In fact, I've got a note, don't edit below this line unless you know that you know. But if you're into programming, by all means, please take this script, do something cool with it, and shoot me an email and let me know how you used this particular script to do something on your Raspberry Pi. So there you have it, guys. That's how I'm using this HT to send a command and turn that radio on and off. It's not haunted at all. Hey, if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.